This video will demonstrate how to use a little known but very useful browser and login based application called a notebook. Now, notebooks work somewhat like bookmarking associated with a login account. Say, for instance, you have a Gmail account. If you install the Firefox extension for the Google toolbar and you're at a web page that you would like to bookmark for later reference, you can uh, log into your Gmail account and then go to the Google toolbar and bookmark that page. And then that bookmark will be available to you on any computer anywhere in the world as long as you're logged into your Gmail account through a Google toolbar. The difference between bookmarking and making notes in a notebook is that the notebook note will not only include a link back to the original web page, it will also include just the part of the web page that you selected and saved as a note. This can be very useful for students or teachers doing research for a report or a lesson plan. Teachers can create custom online textbooks. It can be useful in the workplace. If you're assigned a research project, you can go out on the internet and gather notes from various parts of web pages and save those notes in a notebook and you can also share that notebook with your colleagues. Now the two notebooks we'll be working with today are the Google Notebook provided by Google and the Zoho Notebook provided by Zoho.com. In order to use either of those notebooks you need to install Firefox extensions and I'll show you how to do that right now. If you go to the Firefox Tools menu up here at the top and drag down to Add-ons, you could click on the Get Add-ons tab and you could search for the extensions. Um, I already have them installed, so I'm going to click on my extensions to show you how they're spelled. The extension you would need to use a Google Notebook is the Shareaholic extension, and it's spelled S-H-A-R-E-A-H-O-L-I-C. The extension you would need for a Zoho Notebook is the Zoho Notebook Helper, and Zoho is spelled Z-O-H-O. -O. Now, once you have the, either of those extensions installed, this is how it would work. Let's say you're a student doing research for a report that you have to write, and you're at the library reading down through this very, 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 very long page, and you get to a part of the web page that you would like to revisit later when you're writing your report. You can select that part of the page, highlight and select that part of the page, and then right click. And then you have the option to add it to a Zoho notebook if you have the Zoho extension installed or the Google notebook with a Shareaholic extension. Now, initially in the submenu for the Shareaholic extension, the Google notebook doesn't show up. You would go to more options to find it on the left, highlight it, and click the Add button. And once you do that, when you right-click again, go to the Shareaholic menu and submenu, the option to add the note to a Google Notebook is available, and I'm going to do that. If you're not already logged into your Gmail account, it will ask you to log in. And then once you're logged in, another dialog box will come up, and it will ask you if you want to add the note. And you would just click Yes, Add the Note. Now, one problem I want to point out with using either the Google Notebook or the Zoho Notebook is that you do not have an option to create a new notebook or to select from several of your notebooks that you may have uh, as to where the notebook will be added. The note will be added to the most recently opened notebook. In this case, I opened a notebook a couple days ago called the evolution of cancer and the notes going to be added there. If I wanted to add that note to a different notebook I would have to drag it there later and I'll show you how to do that right now. Let me just click yes add the note. Now one thing I want to point out while we're, st while we're still here is at the top of this little window is a link to my Google notebook interface and I'm going to click on it right now to go to the Google notebook interface. On the left here are all the notebooks associated with this Google account. On the right here in this big space is the Evolution of Cancer Notebook. It was the notebook that was most recently opened. And the note that I just saved is right here. If that note is in the wrong notebook, I, just, I can click and drag it to the right notebook like this. Now, right now the note is collapsed. 
it just has the title of the web page plus a link back to the original web page. If I want to expand the note, I click the plus sign, and there is the part of the web page that I selected and saved as a note. Now, I can also reorder notes within a notebook by, by clicking and dragging and rearranging them that way. When I first started using the Google Notebook about two years ago, I um, was preparing to teach a biotechnology course for the first time. Towards the end of the summer, as I was preparing for the course, I was somewhat dismayed because the textbook my district provided was not a biotechnology textbook. So I was, I was considering my options. I knew that I could go out on the internet and find a whole bunch of different websites and web pages that I would want my students to read, but I knew that there would probably only be parts of those web pages I would want for my, want my students to read. And so I started thinking about using Google Notebook Notes for um, creating an online textbook. I was also running out of time, so I knew that I didn't have the time to do that. So in the end, what I decided to do was I uh, had my first semester students do a research project, and they picked uh, a subtopic, uh, biotechnology subtopic, in order to create online notebooks for supplementary readings for those subtopics. So in order to facilitate that, I created one single Gmail account and I gave my students that username and password and then they created all of these um, notebooks over here on the left for that assignment. After the assignment was over, I logged into the account and I changed the password so that I would be the only future owner and controller of those notebooks, but I will now be able to use those notebooks and share the notebooks for to my future classes for individual homework readings on these different biotechnology topics. So let me just uh, find a notebook a student created. This student created notebook notes and he created the, put the notes in sections. I'm going to expand a section right now. And here's a, a collapsed note in that section. I'll expand it. It includes the title of the web page, plus a link back to the original web page, plus the paragraph and picture that the student, student selected and saved as a note. And the note below, there's another note below that in this section as well. Um, now, um, I should point out at this point that there are some problems with using a Google notebook. Google stopped developing this tool a couple years ago or about a year and a half ago and some of the functionality is somewhat problematic or not functional at all. One of the problems is that the notebook capture process does not work really well compared to Zoho notebooks. For instance, here is a capture that included uh, a title part of a web page and included an embedded video file below that title and then two text paragraphs below that. Um, the, the embedded video file wasn't captured, only a link to the embedded video file was captured. Um, that same capture in a Zoho notebook looks like this. Here's the Zoho notebook. It's got the title, it's got the embedded video file, and the text below it. And not only that, you can play the video within the notebook note, which is way cool. Now, uh, here's another capture I did with the Zoho notebook. It included uh, a link to an embedded audio file, and the links uh, are, are captured cleanly here. That same capture in a Google notebook is very problematic in the way that it captured the link to the embedded video. There does seem to be a link here, but it also captured a whole lot of HTML code, which is kind of confusing for anybody reading this notebook um, note. Another problem with using uh, the Google Notebook is that you can no longer share newly created notebooks. There is the sharing option here at the top, and it looks like it's functional. You can actually type in um, Gmail addresses or email addresses to share the notebook with someone. Um, and then it will also give you an option of emailing them a notice when you share the notebook. But when you click Save Settings, a little notice will appear up at the top here that will say you don't have access to the notebook to share it. Uh, there is a workaround, however, to share content of notebooks in Google Notebooks. You can go to Manage Notebooks here on the left and then find your notebook 
and then let me just find it and then click the export option you can export it as a google document and right now it's building a google document of that notebook unfortunately the notes cannot be expanded or collapsed or rearranged easily but you do have the option of sharing it like any google document if you go up here to the upper right you can publish it to the web which is something i would not recommend since it would violate copyright law however it would probably be probably be less problematic to share it to individual email addresses here. So I think that would be less risky in terms of violating copyright law. Now, um, another problem with using Google Notebooks is that even though it kind of sounds like it might be nice that um, you have uh, your notebooks associated with your Gmail account, associated with your Google Calendar, if you're using, using the Google Calendar and Google Docs, um, there is no link here at the top of the um, Gmail or um, Google account interface to go to your notebooks. Um, if you click on more, you can go to your documents or your calendar, but there's no link to Google notebooks. Even if you click on even more, there's no option for notebooks here. A workaround for that is if you're using the Google toolbar, you can actually create a bookmark on the toolbar that goes to your Google notebook interface or if you're logged into your Gmail account and you do a, uh, a search for the Google Notebook, when you click on the link result for that search, it will actually take you on, back to your own personal Google Notebook interface. So that's one way of getting to your Google Notebook um, interface. Um, and then there's one more problem with Google Notebooks, and that's a problem I just recently noticed. The first Google Notebook I ever created was a notebook I I was using to uh, compile resources for elderly care for an aging parent that I would share with my brothers. Um, I just recently noticed in that notebook the, the notes themselves are no longer expandable. Um, I don't have the option to go back to just part of the web pages that I selected and saved as notes. Basically, it's just a link back to the original web page or a bookmark, which is not, not very functional at all if we're talking about notebooks. Now I want to go back to the Zoho Notebook interface to show you how that looks. Um, the Zoho Notebook interface looks a lot like the Google Notebook interface in that you have, um, you have notes that can be expanded or collapsed. You can click and drag them and rearrange them. You can also drag them to other notebooks. Um, in addition to that, you have some uh, more flexibility in terms of what you can add to a notebook. You can also add an image, an audio file, a video file. If you click on more, you can see that you can add a spreadsheet or a document from the Zoho cloud-based application that's basically an online word processing application where you can add a PowerPoint-like um, show uh, through their cloud-based application called Show. Uh, in notebooks, you can also add different pages. Over here on the right, you have different tabbed pages that you can put in a notebook so you can have notes organized in pages, somewhat like the way that you can organize a Google notebook with sections of the notebook. Um, you have a lot more flexibility in terms of sharing the document. You can actually share the notebook up here with this hand symbol with this drop down menu you can share with individual people and their email addresses and you can make the people you or enable the people you share it with to be editors of the document which means they can add notes or rearrange notes or add content to the notebooks um, one other uh, thing about using Zoho notebooks is that the way you log in um, you can create a Zoho account um, Zoho is a company that offers cloud-based applications very similar to Google Docs and you can create a Zoho account for that or you have the option to create a Zoho account through uh, logging into your Gmail account or through a Google Apps account or through a Yahoo account or a Facebook account and these accounts are all free at least for now uh, for personal use. They do have uh, a number of uh, business-based applications that they charge for, but at least for now, the uh, personal accounts are free. Zoho is not as strong a company as Google, so, um, so who knows how long they're going to be around um, and whether your notebooks will always be available to you. Um, so that's basically it for using notebooks.